Microsoft have bought ZeniMax, which includes all of the Bethesda Softworks studios. I've got to be honest though, because for a second, I thought I was in like an Obsidian Entertainment dream. This was the only possible reality where I could see them being able to make another Fallout. This is monumentally huge. I think by now most gamers have heard the actual news, so I want to dive a bit deeper. I want to talk about what this means for Fallout, what it means for the Elder Scrolls, all these other different franchises under Bethesda, and I also want to talk about what this could mean for gaming. Let's jump in. Hi, Estelden here. To say I'm shocked would be an absolute understatement. I mean, within the gaming world, this is very much like Disney buying Star Wars, I would say. That is how big this is. And while it's going to be a few years before we see direct results of this behind the scenes, a lot may change with some of Bethesda's biggest franchises. And it may not take long for us to learn what some of those plans are. I'm going to be brief on what's happening because I feel it's simply public knowledge now. Microsoft have bought ZeniMax, which means they own Fallout, they own Elder Scrolls, Doom, Dishonored, Wolfenstein, the list absolutely goes on. And some of these are ridiculously iconic franchises and they've got a wonderful rich history on PC. The important first question though, is this move good for gamers? Is this good for those of us who aren't just suits at Microsoft and likely are not shareholders? Is this positive for the everyday gamer? I'm going to cover both sides of this because I feel there are positives here for gamers, but there's also a few negatives as well. So I'll keep this pretty balanced as best I can. I, I think that's important. And the first positive is if you're a PC gamer like I am, you're probably pretty safe in the short term. Microsoft have put in a lot of effort to win PC gamers back. We've seen it with games like the Master Chief Collection on PC. And there's also been new titles such as Wasteland 3, which have been going straight on Game Pass. And you can access them for like $5, $10, whatever it might be. And we've also been told that's going to then continue with all of these Bethesda franchises like Starfield, Elder Scrolls, Fallout. They'll likely launch on Steam, but then you'll also have that choice to play it on Game Pass if you prefer to just kind of try it out and use it with the subscription model instead of paying full price for the title on release day. If you look into all of this news and people's opinions on it too, and I can tell you I've been doing this all day because it is pretty damn exciting, it's going to kind of shake the industry. What I'm kind of finding is that the general verdict is very much that if you're a PC gamer, right now this is a positive. Why? Well, if this hadn't happened, good old Sony would have been sniffing around Starfield. And if you don't know much about that game, it appears to be a sci-fi RPG that's using the typical Bethesda formula, and Sony wanted it as a timed exclusive. It's very possible that had they gotten away with that, and I mean, the only reason they didn't was because of those meddling kids, in this instance being Microsoft, it would have meant that PC players may have missed out for at least a time. We may have been shafted for like 6 to 12 months, and the good news is that is no longer the case, and it simply can't happen, which is fantastic news. Something else that I've been very excited about is we may actually see the end of that shitty Bethesda launcher. I've been playing Doom Eternal recently, and it forces you to log in with a Bethesda account. It's really intrusive, and it seems like you have to use it if you want to access all the features. And I mean, come on, just piss off. I brought the game on Steam, I don't want any of that crap in my single player game. And as far as I can tell, Microsoft haven't been like this with titles like Wasteland 3. And that tells me we'll be able to play on Steam, we can play on Game Pass, we'll have a choice there, and we won't have to actually log into anything. That could change though, I don't want to say that as like fact, because you never know, Microsoft could change their tune, and you might have to log in with an Xbox account no matter where you're playing, but we'll see what happens, but for now I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I do have to say though that it's a little bit comical that a lot of Sony fans have been praising these exclusives like Demon's Souls, and I've seen a ton of people say how there's absolutely nothing wrong apparently with a good old console exclusive. And now all of a sudden this news is the worst thing to happen to the industry. I mean, Jesus, stop with the damn hypocrisy. If you hate exclusives, fine. I don't like them either, but the reason I'm reasonably happy with this news is I know at least over the next decade or so, I'm going to have no issues playing any Bethesda Softworks games. I know they'll be on PC, I know they'll likely be on Steam, and I can play them. When Bethesda and ZeniMax were doing their own thing, there was no guarantees because Sony were greasing the wheels of any and all publishers trying to take content away from players on other platforms. That is not happening anymore. We know where we stand. So if you're angry as a PS5 player that you can't play Elder Scrolls 6, you should be just as angry about Demon Souls being excluded from all these other devices. The key difference for me here is that Microsoft are not just putting everything on their one platform, being the Xbox. They're open to PC. Sony, they want to keep everything just on their one console. They're not willing to look at any other markets. And I think that is a key difference. That is important to distinguish here. 
I'll go into a bit more of the purchase side of this shortly, but I very much want to talk about Fallout and Elder Scrolls first. Starting with Fallout, it's an iconic series that started on the PC, and for those who don't know, one of the creators, if not the creator of the series, he works at a little company called Obsidian Entertainment, who you might know. Creators of Fallout New Vegas, and now they're sharing an office with Bethesda. I mean, not literally, they probably work on other sides of the country, but you, you know what I mean. But the short version of this is Obsidian can realistically make a Fallout game again. Previously, there's been some tension between Obsidian and Bethesda, which basically boiled down to a bonus not being paid due to Fallout New Vegas missing out on a certain Metacritic score. Yes, it's, it's as ludicrous as it sounds. They had to reach a certain Metacritic score to get this big studio bonus. Some people might say a deal's a deal, and I have heard that argument, but the main reason they didn't reach the score is due to criticisms of bugs and jank. Bethesda, though, they were the ones who were meant to be doing that QA. Pretty odd, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit like asking EA for advice on ethics. It's fairly ridiculous. Bethesda dropped the ball with the QA, as you probably expect, surprise, surprise, and Obsidian never got paid the bonus, and they nearly went bankrupt. And I wanted to mention that story because that's all potentially water under the bridge now, because those studios are now under Microsoft, both of them. And because of this bad blood between those studios, I honestly never thought we would see a Fallout game from Obsidian again. In fact, I didn't think we'd get a Fallout game at all from anyone who isn't Bethesda. And the reason for that is I do believe that Fallout New Vegas, it damaged Bethesda's reputation. When Fallout 3 came out, it was hailed by most people. But after Fallout 4, people had Fallout New Vegas as a reference, and most people thought, wait, hang on, this game is a terrible RPG, it's basically just an open world shooter. That means Bethesda's vision for Fallout had less chance of being accepted by the public and fans, so they decided they needed to etch their claws in and not let anyone else touch it. Only they are allowed to screw up the franchise with games like Fallout 76, so that's pretty much how it was. Microsoft, though, they could not give a fuck about any of that, any of that history. What they will see is a universally loved franchise that has a limitless potential, and it is not being utilised. I would say Fallout, along with Elder Scrolls, would be something like 70, maybe 80% of the reason that they spent billions of dollars. And I mean, I'm not a Microsoft accountant, I can't prove that, but if you don't believe me, take a look at Xbox head Phil Spencer's Twitter. He's already got Vault Boy as his DP. After making a purchase like this, I really don't think Microsoft are just going to let Fallout sit around gathering dust until Todd and his team are ready to get stuck into it again. Let's look at the timelines. Starfield is next from them. Elder Scrolls 6 is meant to come after, and then you'd assume Fallout 5 would follow, but it hasn't even been confirmed. If I'm being extremely generous, so I'm talking like best case scenario here, we would see Starfield in 2022, and that's because Pete Hines, he made it clear it's years away, and let's say the stars perfectly align for Elder Scrolls 6, and then that comes out in 2026. That's going to be 15 years after Skyrim, mind you. And then we'd be looking at a 2030 launch for Fallout 5 at the earliest. 2030. I'm dead serious when I say this, but I actually think that game could be Todd Howard's last. He'll be pushing 60, he's probably loaded. And I imagine at that age, it might be tempting to walk away rather than committing to another four or five year dev cycle in his 60s. I really cannot see Microsoft making this purchase and being happy with 2030 Fallout for the next entry. If 76 had have been a success, it might be another story, but that game didn't just damage Bethesda's reputation, it damaged Fallout. And I know some people are going to say, oh, but I love it. Yeah, yeah, good on you. But Microsoft, they're going to absolutely want to repair that damage with a new single player focused title. And that can then really push Game Pass. That's going to be the focus for them. Obsidian has the experience. They're trusted by fans and a spiritual successor to Fallout New Vegas would be a massive PR win for them and Microsoft. Why the fuck not? I know they've got Avowed, but Obsidian do have multiple teams. So I don't think it's out of the question that the Outer Worlds DLC team and maybe another one of their teams could at least get to the start of working on a new Fallout game. They could even look to In Exile if they want to put an isometric touch back into Fallout. Ideally, they'd make a brand new game, but if I was looking at it from a pure business perspective and not just as a Fallout lover, I could also see Microsoft commissioning them to make remakes of Fallout 1 and 2 for both console and PC. If they were true to the originals whilst perhaps fleshing out some of the combat a little bit, I could certainly see that working and offering a great way for the millions of fans who likely didn't play the fantastic original games because of the graphics and the UI. I don't really see a reason as to why Microsoft wouldn't want to get the very most out of that IP. I mean, let's say Wasteland 3 was instead called Fallout, Colorado Edition. 
it probably would have sold like five times the copies or brought in at least five times more Game Pass subs. So that's certainly one way to look at it. Now, I personally hope they don't just go and milk it for the sake of it, but if decent studios are making Fallout RPGs, I'll probably give them a chance. They cannot possibly be shitter than Fallout 76 and potentially Fallout 4, surely. Now, Elder Scrolls, that to me is Bethesda's genuine magnum opus. They created it, it put them on the map, and in terms of integrity with casual fans, it's still going really strong. It hasn't had that huge meme coverage in a negative way like we had with Fallout. I'd say Microsoft will let Bethesda do their own thing with 6, and then afterwards it may be fair game. Microsoft are never going to let a series like that just sit idle again for 15 years. I know there's the MMO, but let's face it, that's a bit of a niche drama, and it's never going to be the juggernaut of like an Elder Scrolls 6, 7 or 8, it's never going to get to that level. Again, I am speculating, but I really do expect Microsoft to diversify a little to get the most out of all these IPs. The other franchises like Doom and Wolfenstein, they seem to be going okay for the most part, or maybe I jumped the gun with Wolfenstein because Youngblood is absolutely terrible. I think Machine Games were either forced to do that by Zenimax, or if they wanted to do it, it was just no good at all. And I think they dropped the ball too even earlier with Wolfenstein New Colossus, which to me just had way too many cutscenes, it was overly story focused. I think they're best off focusing on level design and actually taking more inspiration from Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Doom, on the other hand, seems to be doing a whole lot better. They don't need cutscenes in the game every five minutes. They don't need a whole bunch of multiplayer elements. They seem to be doing really well and, and selling quite well too. Back to the acquisition itself, some information has gone round suggesting this purchase has actually been in the works for two plus years. This makes plenty of sense to me because a deal of this size, it doesn't just happen during afternoon drinks at the pub. This is serious shit, and I can say that deals like this, they can fall apart at any moment along the way. So Zenimax would have been operating as if this was never going to actually happen. So things like the Fallout canvas bag, we can only hope that there's no more of those sort of debacles with Microsoft. I mean, the comedy element is great, but when you're the customer and you're getting screwed, it's probably not quite as funny. I think I've gone through most of the positives, so I feel it is only fair to mention the negatives as well. When this news broke, I had a ton of different trains of thought going on. All these possibilities of different games that were now potentially realistic. All these studios who can now work together and improve the AAA landscape. All was sounding really good. At the end of the day though, Microsoft is a gigantic company that does not give a fuck about us. Their whole goal with all of this is just to sell Game Pass subs to the common folk. It doesn't matter if you're gaming on an Xbox or a PC like I am, they just want to sell it to you. My main worry is that once they achieve that goal and they've got a massive ecosystem with the Game Pass numbers right up there, things will start to change and I think that will begin with more price hikes for Game Pass and also more games developed that keep you subscribed to the service for longer. I actually just made a video yesterday about how CD Projekt Red weren't really happy with the completion numbers on Witcher 3. What if one of the reasons that Microsoft are making all these RPGs and they're investing in these RPG studios is they know that people will start playing them on Game Pass, they probably won't finish them, at least not in short time, and that means they're going to stay subscribed to the service because they'll be thinking to themselves, oh, I've got that RPG, I still haven't finished it. I better keep Game Pass running though because I'll probably go back to it. You never know, it's a bit tin foil, but it could be the plan. The good news is though, while they're building up Game Pass, they can't really afford to do anything shady because it'll just ruin the growth. If they hiked up the price of Game Pass and they started to get stingy with the PC audience, for example, by moving all of their games off Steam and back to their own crap store, they'd fall flat on their face. For at least the next 10 years, which is a fair chunk of time, they're going to have to deliver good games. They get gamers who enjoy all sorts of different genres onto the platform. And that's absolutely not going to happen overnight. The reason I worry is I know what they're doing right now is in no way profitable. They've got what, like 10 plus studios they're operating now? And that shit is not cheap. I live here in Australia and there is not a single triple A studio left in the country because they're so damn expensive to run in the Western world. It's fucking expensive. And so for Microsoft to really start making money from all this, they're going to need a lot of Game Pass subs and they probably need the price to go way up. In the short term though, it's probably fine. They're not going to go and screw up Fallout or Elder Scrolls, at least really obviously, because they want it to remain valuable and ensure it incentivizes people onto the platform and brings them in. We'll just have to see what happens in like half a decade or a decade's time and see if things change. The whole monopoly within the gaming industry is something that really concerns me as well. I make it no secret that I've got some big problems with the AAA industry, but I do hold out hope and it's part of the reason I make these videos and talk about all these things. I've got hope that we can get more decent AAA games that are quality and help gaming as a whole. 
I absolutely love indie games. I love plenty of small budget games, but they are a little bit restrictive when it comes to innovating the industry and pushing us forward. What I want is that mix of indie quality and integrity mixed in with some of the bigger budgets, and that's obviously the dream. When the only big gaming companies left are Sony and Microsoft with maybe Nintendo, that's where I'd really, really worry. I think a diverse range of publishers helps ensure competition, and it helps to ensure that gamers get better games overall. There's all this talk of Sony buying studios like Larian or even bigger ones like Capcom, and to me, that would just absolutely suck. I don't think this particular purchase is the end of the world, but if it resulted in every studio who can code and release a game being under one or two umbrellas, then that would just not be good for gaming. I sincerely hope we get to the stage in the next 10 years or so where indie development becomes cheap and easy to the point where it's realistic for people to do it alongside their full-time jobs, and then go and release a game in a reasonable fashion. If that were to happen, that would be the best possible competition to the AAA industry. And it would ensure that even if a big monopoly ends up happening with the big games, gamers would have somewhere to turn, which is what I think is really important. From a PC gamer's perspective, looking at Game Pass right now, it's pretty obvious that the value's there. I was paying something like a dollar a month, I believe, when I got it for Wasteland 3 not too long ago, and we've already been given the news that the price is going up. So that's the start of it. And you can expect that to continue every 12 months or so as more and more people get invested into it. And while I haven't really followed them, I imagine that Steam flash sales and things like that will be pretty scarce for Xbox games. They'll give you an option to buy them there, but they're going to be focused on pushing everyone to Game Pass. So it's worth keeping an eye on and certainly worth speaking up if Microsoft get out of hand. Because that's actually what led to their pro-consumer behaviour in the first place. It was simply because they were making less money than the competition. When a company is struggling, they'll have to win back customers, and that means they're more likely to offer better products for better prices. You only have to look at Sony right now. They're winning the race, so to speak, so they're charging 70 plus dollars for games. They're locking away games with timed exclusivity, and treating their fans like shit in a number of different ways. Do you think that that would be happening if they were doing similar numbers as they were doing in the early PS3 days? Absolutely not. They're being arrogant because they can. If a company feels like they have to be competitive to win back those customers, then that is where gamers win. That's where I hope we can get to, and by looking at everything objectively, not getting suckered in by particular brands or companies and treating them like your favourite sports team, and whether it's Sony, Microsoft, Epic, Steam, whoever it might be, it is best just to focus on who is providing value and switching or looking elsewhere when these companies are being too greedy and they're trying to get away with something. For those curious about how this is all going to work, I think Starfield's going to be the game to watch out for. Obviously, as they've said, it's a few years away, but we'll see what their business focus, I suppose, is when that game releases. We'll see if it's going to come out for PlayStation. We'll see if it'll be out on Game Pass and you can play it really cheap, assuming a price hike for that service hasn't happened by then. But that'll tell us about the future direction, not just with Bethesda, but also Microsoft as well and how they're having their studios operate. Are they allowed to do their own thing? or are Microsoft going to force in like a whole bunch of crap? I hope it's not the case. I've been kind of let down by Bethesda at least for the last like five years or so, possibly going on a lot longer than that. But we'll see if this is a positive because ZeniMax were running them into the ground anyway. It's not like this is the best studio ever. Microsoft have jumped in and now it's like up in the air. They were probably heading for a race to the bottom anyway. So we'll see what happens. I hope that this is good for RPG fans for gamers in general going forward, but I'm going to be a little bit skeptical and I'm going to keep an eye on it. So let's see what happens. So thanks very much for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks very much and bye-bye.